Hello and welcome to the panel where we take a look at graphic novels and talk about their story, art, and everything in between. Now as we approach the Halloween season we decided to take a look at not one but two books in the horror genre. Archie horror that is. Jughead the Hunger and Vampironica both from Archie Comics. Now joining us today we have the Duchess of Free Comic Book Day Ashton Greenwood. Hey howdy hey what's up guys? Consumer marketing guru for Previews World, Troy Jeffrey Allen. That's right, dumbass. Car beats face. <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest is digital marketing manager for RG Comics. Please welcome Ron Cacase. Thank you so, fu so much for having me here. I'm the guy that does the Twitter account. If you want to yell at me, do it right now. Do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you do go viral quite often. Yeah. RG yeah. Twitter is my favorite thing. I love it so much. <laughs> It is a curse and a gift and all of those things wrapped up in one. Thank you so much for all your support. I love doing <laughs> tweets. I have nightmares about them. And, and what a better what a better segue to talk about, you know, nightmaric stuff than Archie Har, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And how's everyone doing situated at home and doing with the current situation, I guess, at home? Uh you know, at this point, I'm getting used to it. I like, mm -hmm. I don't even know if we, I want to go back into the office. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I'm so, I feel like I'm like conditioned like a dog. Like whenever I leave the house, I'm like, I can't wait to go back home. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling so thankful. I moved into a new apartment and I've got it all set up like a comic book shop back here. You nice. know, it's basically comics, games, my little oasis. So when you're talking to me and you, you want to know why I'm not responding fast enough? It's probably because I got my nose buried deep in one of these books here. Yeah, I feel that. That's awesome. That's how to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's start with a little bit of info on the back and background on these titles. So Jughead the Hunger was first published in March of 2017, and it was the first title to appear under the Archer Archie Horror imprint and was initially released as a one-shot alongside the Riverdale pilot. Vampironica was first published in March of 2018, and like The Hunger takes place outside of the main Archie Comics continuity and is continuing on now with a new series that recently released. Um, fun fact that I found out, Vampironica is actually mentioned in the first issue of the Archie horror series Afterlife with Archie mm. when Betty calls Veronica, or calls Veronica Vampironica in regards to her Vampirella costume that she was wearing. So. <laughs> Ooh. So now yeah. this question is for Ron. I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say there's a, an extra little bit of trivia there in that uh, one of the classic comics by Dan Parent from mm -hmm. many years ago, there was a, like all ages appearance of Vampironica. So she did kind of appear in some stories before the Archie horror stuff. Oh. If, you, if you've got, you know, eyes sharp enough, you can figure out where that was. Yeah, and I haven't read the I haven't read the Red Sonia Vampirella crossover, but I'm I hope that there's a a reference to to that somewhere in that uh that miniseries as well. It is beyond anyone's wildest imagination. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ron, this all might not have happened if Afterlife with Archie hadn't done as well as it did when it first came out back in 2013. When did Archie Comics decide that the horror genre was something that they wanted to kind of tackle? So this was a little bit before my time. I started working at Archie in 2014, but I was working at a comic book store when they launched Afterlife with Archie. And it was, this is a funny story. It was such a big deal. I, I was, I made a note to myself that we had to order a lot of copies and then I completely forgot to order any copies. <laughs> so oh, no. it was like the night before release day and we're like, why didn't these show up? So we actually contacted uh, someone who was working at Archie and they drove down and gave us a bunch of comics the oh, night wow. of. Wow. So we were able wow. to get copies of Afterlife to everyone. And after, after Afterlife, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina came out, mm -hmm. and that was right when I started. So they, they realized, hey, there's something here. If we have these dark takes on the characters, we twist them, we turn them into something a little bit different than what people are used to, they're mm -hmm. really going to enjoy it. Because one of the things that Archie has been so great at is appealing to a younger audience. And mm -hmm. when that audience kind of grows out of reading Archie, some of them do, they still have a fondness for it. So if we can do something that's a little bit more mature, you know, going after older readers, they recognize the characters, they recognize the concepts, but they're done completely differently. So when we decided to go with Jughead the Hunger, we were like, maybe we can do something else beyond uh, zombies and beyond, you know, witches. And it, it worked. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Now, now you're on social media a lot, so you inter interact with a lot of people. What have you seen that's been the general reaction from the public to the Archie horror line? So usually people are shocked because <laughs> people have a, an idea of Archie in their head. That was something that they grew up reading and it was wholesome. And, you know, Archie was setting up a date with Veronica and Betty at the same time. And Jughead was eating a mountain of hamburgers. And now... Jughead is a werewolf eating a mountain of people and you know, all this weird <laughs> stuff's happening. But once they get past that initial shock factor, they start to dive into the stories and they just, they read right through. Like they, mm -hmm. I'll see messages from people who were like, this was weird. And then I read all of it immediately. So mm -hmm. they want mm -hmm. to find out what's happening in these stories. They really like seeing things get twisted and weird. And then it makes them appreciate everything else that we're doing. So they can go back and read the mm -hmm. stories that they read when they were growing up or check out new things. It really is a great way to get people's attention back to Archie and then figure out everything else that we've got going on. There's a great little like uh, intro in front of, I think it's the Vampironica book, or maybe it's the Hunger book, but it kind of was like an aha moment for me where uh, I think it was uh, Alex Segura says uh, that Archie is Americana, but so is horror. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's so, my eye too. Right, and so it just kind of like, so these two things fit perfectly and mm -hmm. you don't realize that, but by the end of both of these books, I definitely kind of felt that too. So like, perfect, absolutely. And the other thing that works well with these is like, there's moments where you can kind of see through the horror takes on these characters to them being the things you expect them to be. Like Archie mm -hmm. does some vaguely dumb thing that ends up working out and like <laughs> Jughead's eating and like, you know, Betty's being the girl next door. Like they all still fulfill those roles you yeah. expect of them, yeah. but it's done through a different lens. Mm -hmm. Exactly, excellent point. They still retain who they are as characters while being in completely outlandish situations. You still recognize that you know Archie accidentally hit somebody with his car, but this time it was good because <laughs> they were a monster. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> now, Ron, are there any other Archie horror titles that are coming out or on the horizon? Definitely. So next month we are launching a new one shot chilling adventures of Sabrina presents Madam Satan. It's yeah. by Elliot Rahal and Julius Ooh. Oda, Matt Herms and Jack Morelli. And this is a absolutely gorgeous book. Mm -hmm. So it follows Madam Satan who you might recognize from the Netflix series or the comic series. And really it's about what happens when she gets exactly what she wants. And sometimes that's not a good thing. So if you are chasing something for so long and you lose sight of really why you wanted it, this mm -hmm. is a story that tells you like what could happen. And if you're interested in this, we really think you're going to love it. Tell your comic shop by Monday because this is a book that's probably going to sell out day one just because mm -hmm. I think it's a sleeper hit. So mm -hmm. tell your shop, comic shop to pre-order by Monday. Mm -hmm. It is out October 21st and I am done selling it for right now. <laughs> for right now. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sell it even further because like I like I bugged you the other day about like getting an interview for this because yeah that that cover and the interior art and the uh, process art like it was just like whoa what is this like it's you know it's yeah. not your classic Archie but it also like is definitely an attention grabber so I'm looking forward to it too yeah I, it's gonna catch a lot of people off guard and you know, it's just, if it does well, there's a potential for doing something more like this. And that's really what we want to do. We want to hear from people and, and see what they want from us mm -hmm. uh, in terms of new concepts, new characters and new stories. Yeah. Nice. I love how Archie like takes in the feedback. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, before we get into the details of these books, uh, Troy, Ashton, what are your initial thoughts after reading uh, The Hunger and Vampironica? Who's going first here? I was gonna uh, let you go first. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I know. I know this is a subject dear to your heart. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so nervous. I'm stressed. I have a lot of thoughts. Um, <laughs> so the the first thing that actually, like, one of the things that stuck out to me the most with Jughead the Hunger as I was reading through it is it like the entire way through has this weird sense of foreboding that's reflected in the art in that like. Mm -hmm. It's weirdly always nighttime or it's dark or like even when it's daytime, yeah. it's drawn dark. So it kind of is like you always are on the edge waiting for something else to happen because there's no sense of relief all the way through. Like it's gas pedal the whole way, which mm -hmm. I kind of like that for my horror. Um, mm. I have to give a shout out to Cousin Bingo because he just like shows off. He's <laughs> like, I'm here. I'm ripped and gorgeous. Let's eat some people. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's so accurate, actually. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Cousin Bingo, too, because his rationalization of, like, why they eat people is actually pretty phenomenal. It really and I guess, is. Yeah, I'll actually get into that later, I guess. But, like, uh, my big takeaway is I want to see a crossover now where Veronica fights Betty, but this time it's Betty Cooper, Werewolf Hunter, versus Ooh. Veronica Lodge, Vampironica, because I saw, I read, you know, reading these, I'm like, wait, so Veronica's, like, Blade, and Betty's, like, Buffy. <laughs> Like, this is absolutely oh, perfect. Wow. <laughs> Who's going to turn Archie into what? I know, right? That may, that should be the the the, pull, the give and take in the middle of this. Who's going to turn Archie? Well, you know, <laughs> we did end up doing, after both of these series, we ended up crossing them over. So there was Jughead the Hunger versus Vampironica. But we've been looking at things we can do with Betty because it's such a wonderful character and she hasn't really had her own Archie horror treatment yet. Um, mm -hmm. Something that comes up a lot here. And, and... Ashton, to your point, the sense of dread that fills every panel of Jughead the mm -hmm. Hunger, where Jughead almost doesn't seem like he has any agency in what's going on. It almost seems like the world is moving around him and he's just running with no direction. Mm -hmm. So it really makes you feel uneasy because you don't know where what he's going to do next, what's going to happen to mm -hmm. him. He's always on the run. He's always looking over his shoulder. And that's just, that's scary because nobody likes to live like that. All right. And it's also like really a, a, a shift for Jughead, who's typically like got it all figured out ahead of time. Like he's just very or happy like with otherwise like. Otherwise doesn't yeah. care at all. Or doesn't. You know, yeah, right. Like if he like by not fig by figuring out, I mean, he ultimately has just decided he does not care. Right. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to see him have to react and like, you know, uh, have to care essentially. So. Also, like in Jughead the Hunger, I I was like, it goes back to what you said, Tori, about the horror and the note they make about Americana and horror mm -hmm. at the beginning. The mm -hmm. complete, like, completely unabashed approach to the art with, like, like the total gore. I have to say, I was really surprised yeah. by how gory the art was. Like mm -hmm. when Ab, like when Bingo kills Abby at the circus, and her head's ripped off, and like her guts are coming out. I was like, yeah. what is happening? <laughs> right. That gave me pause too. And I've seen a lot of horror. Like I've watched like you know like every type of horror imaginable. And like to even me, I was like, whoa. Okay, Archie, you go ahead, Archie. All right. <laughs> All right, let's let's take a few viewer comments before we go into the art segment here. We have Gomez, our uh, comic collector, Vampironica. It's a great story. It really it is. is. Kyle, Archie Comics, I love you. Kyle, you I too. love you too. I love you too. Love Thank you for the support, well. Kyle. You're always there. I th if, I, if it is who I think it is, you're always there. Thank you. He <laughs> says, I hope we get more Afterlife soon. I miss it. And CAOS, uh, I know you get these comments a lot, but I just love them. Yeah, we hope we hope we get more some we hope we get more soon too. Barb, is this live? I can't tell. Yes, we are yes, live. It is. We're doing we're looking, it live. We're looking right at you, Barb. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> Kyle, I hope Sabrina makes an appearance in it. Woo! -hoo. That'd be great. Oh, that I would want, be awesome. I want Sabrina to show up everywhere. That's like hmm. anytime people are talking about a book here, I'm like, just have Sabrina show up. Like <laughs> it's, she's she's magical. She could pop up and disappear. You don't need to explain it. She could just be on a panel somewhere and then disappear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, since Ashton already started us on that role, let's get moving on into discussing the art. All right, let's start with Jughead the Hunger, um, art by Michael Walsh, who's an Eisner Award-winning comic book creator uh, who uh, co-created Comeback for Image Comics and Pat and Tim Kennedy, or Kennedy, who did Death of Archie. So what were your guys' opinions of the art? What did you think? Well, if I can just jump in there one second, I also want to add on Joe Eisma, who did some of the work in this first graphic novel for Jughead the Hunger, really uh, stepped in there to, to help out the Kennedys. And what I think it does is it really shows the different, uh, the breadth and the variety of our artists. So Michael Walsh really had that, that sense of foreboding, like we were talking about, where like what's gonna be around the corner, what's the dread that's about to await the residents of Riverdale. The Riverdale Ripper is here, but we can't see him, what's going to happen? And just, as you can see in this Grundy sequence, and then with Pat and Tim Kennedy, that's where you got the gore and they went, mm -hmm overboard on the gore here <laughs> so it's yeah. really multiple genres of horror in one series there's gore there's suspense there's you know that anxiety that follows with not knowing what's next mm -hmm. and then joe eisma you know that's joe eisma on the panel there 
he he complimented all that work so wonderfully. So I think they did a wonderful job on this series. Yeah, no, this this book does something that I typically do not like, which is the artist switch, like in between stories. Mm-hmm. But each uh, like each artist compliments each other, like they're very similar in tone. So like the shift isn't jarring, which I really appreciated. So it actually kind of like once I realized that that was happening, I was like, okay, this is cool. Like I can while they're all distinct in their own way at the same time, like it doesn't feel like I'm reading three different comics. So I was actually pretty, it was a pretty smooth like process for me to read it when typically I would just be like pulling my hair. Like, why did you change the artist? So <laughs> I think that's a testament to how uh, great a job that Matt Herms, the colorist did on this book and mm-hmm. all of our books. Mm-hmm. He's masterful at just really blending every different style together to make it seem like a seamless uh, experience. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, shout out to Walsh and Kennedy and Joe Eisma because I didn't even realize that he was a part of that crew. But yeah, that's like pretty awesome. Now, I yeah. really like the art because I just feel like, you know, you get this certain idea of what an Archie comic is. And there is that aspect of it in the comic itself where you still have the relationship and Betty and Veronica kind of like going after Archie. But then you have this this gore aspect to it and it just takes you out of that Archie and you're like, Oh, this is a whole different world. Mm-hmm. Like this is Archie, but it's a mm-hmm. whole different type of Archie. No, um, absolutely. And I really liked how it just kind of created its own, I don't know, world genre mm-hmm. just with the art itself. Yeah. One of the things I appreciated about the art was like how it managed to be so dynamic, specifically when the characters were changing into werewolves. Because like when that gets done in cinema, it's it's quite a process, right? Right. So it got captured really well on the page that they're going through all of these various steps. That it's not mm-hmm. just like regular Jughead, like vampire Jughead. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things I really liked about it was like the first time you see Reggie change, and he's got like his creepy like sewn up eye, and it like rips open yeah. and changes. Uh-huh. That was crazy. But I really liked the way it was able to be so dynamic and keep keep on pace and not kind of get ahead of itself. Absolutely. And actually, no, I just want to reiterate, I mean, just like Ashton said, just like uh, Ron said, uh, shout out to the colorists. Like, you know, they're always the unsung heroes of this process of creating comics. And like, they they have set the tone for this book all the way through. And it just like works for that reason, mm-hmm. especially in the gore category. Yeah. <laughs> category? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know what? I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> now, does everyone have a particular moment in the art that really stood out to them? Um, I think all the transformations, like Ashton mm-hmm. said. Well, you know what? I will say immediately I kind of picked up Jughead the Hunger and I was like, okay, how's this going to work? What is this? Right. And five, not even like two pages in, they kill Miss Grundy. <laughs> right. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I mean, again, like I had to be like, damn, really? You know, and all, and also I was actually kind of surprised how like satisfied I was with like the death of Miss Grundy early on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I really like the, um, so when uh, Dilden's getting, you know, his whole. Murdered? <laughs> yeah. yeah. getting eviscerated. Uh. The thumps. I really liked the thumps that were mm-hmm. kind of like in between the panels and mm. giving you that idea of like the, the dread. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just really liked how that was how that was done that was like probably one of my favorite parts Mm -hmm. yeah it michael walsh did a great job really separating the idea of you know what you see in a panel with what the next action in between is because we always talk about what's what's in the gutters what's the passage of time in the gutters Mm -hmm. and having it be a beating heart that separates the scenes that you're looking at Mm -hmm. really makes it feel like you're in a moment and that you know you're not just transitioning between you know, one explosive action to the next, you're in the second as that it happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, we're speaking of Dilton here, but one of the things that I really liked was how he shows up in both series. So he yeah. shows up in Veronica yeah. Wetness too. So he gets kind of not treated too well in Jughead the Hunger, but he's got a much <laughs> bigger role in Vampironica. Yeah. And it's just, this is a gorgeous book. You can't talk enough about how gorgeous Greg and Meg Small, uh, Greg Smallwood did on this Vampironica graphic novel. Oh, it's God, really yeah. tremendous stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's oh, move God. into Vampironica, actually. So Vampironica, the art is done, like you said, by Greg Smallwood, who did Punisher and Moon Knight, and Greg Scott, who has drawn on such titles as X-Files, Black Hood, Steve McQueen, and Area 51. So let's talk about Vampironica. What did you guys, how did you guys feel about the art in Vampironica? I'm just going to say it. God damn. Like... <laughs> 
Like seriously, like I didn't even know who Greg Smallwood was until I started seeing the promotional stuff early on for this book. And I just absolutely like he just shot to the like top 10 current best comic book artists of all time. Like there's a there's kind of like a weird, like almost like a pencil texture to his yeah. art style that like I almost felt like a couple of times when I was, you know, I'm, I'm like holding the book and I'm reading and I'm thinking like, like I'm going to get like, you know, eraser shavings or something. out of It just feels so like palpable like it's just like it really jumps off the page and i just absolutely love this shout out to both of them greg smallwood like <laughs> yeah and meg smallwood just so good yeah, yeah they did they did a tremendous job with it and just being able to see the emotions on the faces and the reactions mm -hmm. you know that was what i spent a lot of time looking at was just like veronica's face and how she mm -hmm. was in conversation talking to an undead vampire or talking mm -hmm. to dilton mm -hmm. or Archie or Betty and like just seeing the way that she reacts and there's so much emotion portrayed there that I mm -hmm. it's it's just it really takes it to the next level. Yeah, I, I honestly my favorite part would have to be like the classic horror trope of like the like the just the heads, right? And then how it's because it's Veronica, it's all the like designer purses. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Their heads. And I was like, oh, look, she's looking at all the purses. That's very fitting. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Uh, this is kind of more like the story category, but like I, I love that like Veronica's nightmare was involved shopping gone awry. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, well, I love all my, all my nightmares involve going into a store these days, so it makes sense. <laughs> That's, <true. laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> That's very true. What about you, Ashton? Any any thoughts on the art in Van Veronica? Yeah, the the thing in Van Veronica that jumped out to me the most actually happens really early on. It's in like the beginning of the first issue when she's at Cheryl's party and she's fighting the vampires mm. and she walks out of the pool dragging yeah, yeah. like pool shit party, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> like that completely sets the tone for everything. Like in just that moment, you know mm -hmm. that like, you know, something's awry, but you know that like Vampironica is not a bad guy. Like immediately you yeah. get that from that is that she's out to fix this, to make this better. She's still her. Like, I think that particular panel managed to communicate so much about what was going to happen in this story. Yeah, uh, you're exactly right. You, that sets the tone for the entire series, and mm -hmm. and that's what we used a lot when I, I made like a trailer for the for the series, and those were the only pages I had at the moment. And I was like, "This is it. This is all I need." Because yeah. seeing her dive into a pool and come out with two vampire bodies, you know, <laughs> and a pool of blood coming out of the water, mm -hmm. like you didn't expect Archie Comics to hit you with that, but we did. And mm -hmm. it's you know, again, a testament to Greg Smallwood and the editors mm -hmm. on this book for how they set that up. Really, really cool stuff. Also, at the end of the book, when the like the bigger fight kind of breaks out again, back at Cheryl's party, I really like the way that it kind of cut, like kind of cut scenes almost in a way going back between like you know Veronica and her kind of like fist fights in some way, and like mm. Archie and Betty with the holy water super soakers, which was brilliant, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't like again, kind of same thing with Jughead. It does a really good job of being dynamic, but keeping the story on pace and like having all of these cut scenes that work really well without getting too confusing. Right. Actually, well, this is also story. I'll save it for story. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And on that note, let's let's go ahead and move into the story aspect. All right, let's keep rolling with Vampironica. Um, remember, like we said, it was it's written by um, Meg Smallwood and co-written by Greg Smallwood, who did the the art. So kind of an awesome team up there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what did you guys think of the story? You know, all around kind of. Troy, sense. you seem to be chomping at the bit here. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I just was going to point out, like uh, you mentioned, the end of the story, and like there's a there's a part in the story where things are deliberately confusing. Yeah. And I think for maybe a for maybe like about like a fra like half of a page, I was like, "What's going on here? I'm lost." But then it kind of becomes clear that this is some sort of uh, supernatural manipulation, but also the creator manipulating the reader as well. And I thought it was really cool that you kind of are able to catch on pretty quickly. So that's all I was going to say. Are you talking about that page at the end where it's like uh, Hiram and Archie, and he's like paying Archie to be your friend? Right, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was so lost. I was like, no. 
Right. Because, I mean, that yeah. would have been like a continuity buster, right? Like, that would, have yeah. been a, that would have been a moment like, wait, everything up until this point has just been a work for this moment? That's insane. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. whole nightmare sequence kind of got to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they pull you into that sense of unease and uncertainty that Veronica is feeling in that same moment. So you're reading through this and you're like, what, this can't be. And she's reacting the same way that you are because she's saying the exact same thing. And then there's the sequence where Betty's like, oh, thanks, Veronica. I'm so glad you're allowing me and Archie to get married. And she's like, I'm not falling for this for a second. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was too right. much. <laughs> they, they're right. They, they totally overplayed their hand at that point. Right. <laughs> She's like, now I know it's fake. <laughs> right. I actually, I actually kind of appreciate that, like, Veronica being rich is part of the story itself. Like, that's, it mm -hmm. kind of, like, it positions her in a way that's, like, this story could only be told with Veronica because of, like, you know, her father having this, un this guest who comes into their home mm -hmm. and then turns everybody. And then, like, she, I think at one point she has, like, the resources or she makes a comment about, like, you know, it's easy to get the stuff you need to kill vampires when you're rich. Like, you know, right. I mean, just, you know, just like small stuff like that. I thought was actually really cool. It's just sort of like, okay, this story could not be told without Veronica Lodge. So, yeah, I thought that was good. You have to be Veronica being Veronica getting out of the car. And it's like, yes, this is a new outfit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got, I like, I don't know, like uh, how I think uh, me as a Buffy fan, if I remember, I got total charisma carpenter vibes, like, you know, while re while reading this, I was like, yeah. This actually totally fits for me. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes back to what we said, where they keep the they retain the core of the characters and those moments mm -hmm. that really, you know, that's a Veronica thing to do, or mm -hmm. you know, it's a Dilton thing where he's like, oh yeah, I already know all about vampires. Like yeah. I did the research. Yeah. Like I know right. what you are. Right. Uh, or you know, Archie just fumbling his way around and coming up with a super soaker holy water idea. Like all <laughs> this stuff is like the silliness that is in those classic comics. Yeah, just, you know. It turn up the age rating a little bit. Yeah, yeah. no, that's that, that's definitely something I noticed. It's like this is more so than Jughead the Hunger. This is classic Archie. You know, mm -hmm. it just so happens that it, like it has the gore factor and it's got the you know inspe instead of uh, uh, the Dan Parent art, right? It's got the the Greg Smallwood <laughs> Greg Smallwood art. So yeah. And I just, I, I love how they kept the characters in, in like the way that they fight everyone, you know, the vampires. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, my favorite was um, Jughead with the garlic bread breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was great. <laughs> Only he would do that. <laughs> Absolutely. No, shout out. Anytime you incorporate a, a classic Jughead moment, you've won me over. <laughs> Did anyone else have like a favorite part of the story? I thought it was interesting that like the master vampire that was kind of controlling the undead. I liked that it was someone that wasn't like necessarily critical to the story. And sometimes mm. this bothers me when you just have like a random unimportant character that kind of ends up being the crux of the story. Mm. But I think it worked really well here because he had the dragon crest on his coffin that at least it tied it back to like the Romanian lore. So mm. I liked that it wasn't, you know, necessarily like, Hiram's friend or like even Hiram him, himself because I feel like he gets vilified maybe too much um, so I like the way that worked I lost where I was going with that but I liked it <laughs> <laughs> I mean I appreciate that it's like it's kind of vampire 101 they don't try to like subvert what you already know about vampires outside of mm -hmm. like you know yeah okay Jughead has garlic breath and that's how he gets away right but I mean <laughs> like the setup ultimately is just straight up like you know Bram Stoker, Dracula, like yeah. you know, straight down the middle. When they started talking about Romania and all this other stuff, I was like, okay, I get this. I'm down. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm with it. I, I've heard this story before. I know how it works. I'm in. It's very breezy that way. You know what I mean? Like the whole story, like Jughead the Hunger kind of gets into the details a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, Vampironica is like really straightforward and very breezy with its approach. So. Yeah. And that's, you know, we, we try to do different genres of horror. We try to have different you know, the writers bring their own influences, their own favorites, you know, uh, the Jughead, the hunger stuff, Frank Thierry is clearly a, a big fan of the stuff that's a little bit more gory, a little bit more grindhouse. And mm -hmm. so you have those influences there. And then, like you said, with Bram Stoker's Dracula, like on Vampironica, it's more straightforward. It's saying, hey, they're vampires. You're going to have to fight and kill them this way. Mm -hmm. Go at it. Like just, you know, crossbows and holy water guns and garlic red breath and like all this ridiculous <laughs> ridiculous stuff that happens only in Archie comics but it's happening in an Archie horror book and here it is and there you go now mm -hmm. 
You know, you mentioned Jughead the Hunger, so let's mm -hmm. move on to that one. So that uh, is written by Frank Thierry, as you said, who also mm -hmm. worked on Wolverine, Iron Man, JSA Classified, and also wrote the basic storyline for the 2011 video game Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds. Oh, okay. Ooh, <laughs> All right, so now Frank Thierry, did Frank Thierry write Wolverine? I wasn't sure. He's never mentioned that ever before right. in his life. It, it was on his bio, <laughs> so we're going to go with yes. Oh, no he, no, he definitely did. Actually, a matter of fact, there's literally a snick and someone getting impaled by a claw inside uh, in Jughead the Hunger. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I peeped that, and I was like, okay, a little nod to yourself. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe he also wrote Space Punisher, and there's actually an Archie versus Archie meets the Punisher yeah. uh, reference in this book. Oh yeah, when they're like looking at a truck full of weapons, and Archie's like, "You'd have to. This looks like a vehicle somebody with a skull on their chest would like drive around." Right. In. <laughs> yeah. And that's the panel right there. Wow, you guys yep. are really good with this. <laughs> so, yeah, it's you know another reference to one of those classic Archie crossovers that really uh, took people by surprise. But it's such mm -hmm. a such a madcap, you know, 100 mile an hour storyline. You've got yeah. circus people, you've got werewolf clans, you've got <laughs> secret, you know, werewolf hunters. There's mm -hmm. every kind of lore and trope and deep dive thing you could do mm -hmm. in this. And it really, like, it just feels like a celebration of all horror mashed together. Mm hmm. No, absolutely. No, yeah, I, I noticed that Archie versus Punisher reference too. And I was like, <laughs> I like that. The little micro van. Yeah, I'm with that. <laughs> See, I knew I knew we would connect on that. There you go. <laughs> what about you, Ashton? What did you think of the story? Did you have a particular part that stuck with you? So, I, I mean, I loved a lot about the story. One of one thing I want to mention that's maybe not quite as important to the story itself, though, is um, I I really liked how, although Veronica and Reggie weren't necessarily as critical to the story, they were still very much themselves. I loved that. Like Veronica's like angry that Betty and Archie like run off without her. And she's like, yeah. leave me behind. <laughs> and like Reggie's concerned about Reggie and right. like his own personal vendettas. And I re I liked the way that it stayed true to those characters in taking it a step further, which is you know something we've already mentioned a number of times. But it shows mm -hmm. through in pretty much every character that shows up. It manifests in that way. Mm -hmm. Um I the circus thing was weird. I'm not a fan of clowns. There was a clown. I was like, I'm not here for this. <laughs> so you're saying we should do like an Archie horror book where Betty's like a clown? Please don't. Like, <laughs> like, that I have to read it because I'm an Archie fan, and I would just suffer the whole way through. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. No, I'm, 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 I, I, I will, I totally back you on that, Ashton. Like, I love all the, you know, little, the pocket conflicts throughout mm -hmm. the story, right? It kind of keeps the suspense going. It kind of helps the whole thing keep going. It's like everybody is either has a secret or everybody's like at odds with each other. And it just kind of yeah. is a big part of how the story kind of plays out, which is actually pretty cool. And I really appreciated, um, like, and I've said this on previous World Weekly, one of my favorite things about Jughead is his dynamic, uh, his relationship and his dynamic with Archie and kind of that like the give and take and the, the loyalty to a fault there. And that was probably my favorite part of the story here was that the big problem with catching Jughead was that Archie really refused to do it. Uh, mm -hmm, at the beginning, yeah. you know, he talked Betty out of it. And then all the way through, even as Betty kind of dragged him like kicking and screaming mm -hmm. to the bitter end when Jughead finally gets shot, you know, Archie's not feeling good about that decision. Right, so, yeah, yeah. That was probably my favorite thing is that it, that that relationship is kind of like at the core of Archie for me and my experience with Archie. So mm. I love that it still sat at the center of this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had that written on my notes. I was like, Archie, true friend, after witnessing what happened with Milton <laughs> is still like, hey, man, let's talk about this. What yeah. happened last night? Like, everyone else would be like, my friend is a werewolf, and I'm going to have to kill him. And I'm going to have to kill him. With him. And he's like, yeah. let's talk about this. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I know he's like a murderous werewolf, and he's killed several of our friends. <laughs> right. And he may kill me right now, but also we grew up together so mm -hmm. we got to take that into account and yeah. if i don't you know we got to eat hamburgers together eventually so let's figure this out <laughs> i, I want to i do want to point out that frank thierry like i feel like he's got something personal against ethel ethel mugs because she got she got massacred off panel <laughs> and i kind of was like part of me is like i don't know 
as a like a throwback Jughead fan, I'm sort of like, yeah, yeah, whatever, Ethel. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, man, she just got like killed off panel and they kept it moving. I don't know what happens in the other books. Maybe it, maybe she comes back. But I just thought that was like amusing. Nobody gets away uh, looking good from any of these encounters with werewolves. I'll just say that. <laughs> also, shout out to Jughead for maintaining that crown even when he turns into a werewolf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta keep the brand. You gotta keep the brand. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with it. All right. On that note, let's move into our final thoughts. All right. Now you have to pick a favorite. Uh (laughs) Did you guys have a favorite? Do you have a favorite, Ron? Do I have a favorite out of these two books Mm -hmm. or a favorite? Okay. I mean, that's going to be hard to say, right? Because they're they both came around around the same time. They're both so highly influential. I love different things about each of them. And if I say I like one more than the other, somebody's going to get mad at me. So, <laughs> the Twitter will, will roar. Say, yeah, I will say that I really like how Jughead the Hunger kind of takes you on this roller coaster. Mm-hmm. And it takes you through all different kinds of histories and, and backgrounds. And every character has a, has a purpose and, and a mystery about them. And what I really love about Vampironica is that it's so straightforward, so direct, and so beautiful in, in how it does horror. So it's, they're two different beasts entirely, literally. And so I can't pick a favorite, but I'll go with my favorite is Jugged the Hunger versus Vampironica. Oh, Good there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. I like it. I like it. All right. What about you, Troy? Um, you know what? Uh, I'll say this. I think that Jughead the Hunger has a stronger story. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you are an art fan, you should like, there's no reason you should not pick up Vampironica. Like, I mean, I think that's a big takeaway here. Like I, it's, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, Jughead the Hunger springboards into a, an extended series for a reason because there's so much story there. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, we get Vampironica versus Jughead the Hunger. But I just can't take my off, eyes off those uh, Gre- that Greg Smallwood art. Like, it's just phenomenal. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be singing those praises for, like, a long, long time. So more, more Smallwood. <laughs> well, he's done some amazing covers for us. There's a classic one of Archie versus uh, Archie versus Predator Two, yeah, where it's like yeah. you know they're the girls are walking away with the Predator and Archie's in the background like all mad. And there's an <laughs> Archie meets Batman cover that he did. Like really, check out you know Greg Smallwood Archie comics covers on Google. And yeah, there's some amazing stuff. Yeah. All right. What about you, Ashton? Um. I there were a lot of things in Vampironica I really liked. I feel like with Vampironica, I maybe had more what the heck moments, like things caught me off guard. Uh, but I have a tendency just in like my reading in general to lean towards like character based, narrative based stories. So for that reason, Jughead, The Hunger worked a little better for me. Also, um, I feel the need to pick Jughead in all aspects of life. So. <laughs> See, I'm not same way, but I have to go with Veronica. Like, Van- Vampironica was my favorite. I love Veronica. She's my girl. Like, I-, I just envision her going out and kicking vampire butt with, like, all of her tools in her Chanel purse. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm down with that. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was mine. Now, uh, we asked everyone on social media what you guys love about the ho- Archie Horror Line and to let us know what your favorite title is and why you like it. And here's what you had to say. Zachary, it's a hard toss-up because they're all great. If forced, to sh- if forced with sheer terror, I would have to pick Jughead the Hunger or Afterlife with Archie or The Chilling Adventures <laughs> of Sabrina or Vampire. Okay. This guy's cheating. Or Vampironica <laughs> or Blossom 666. <laughs> all right. That's a good answer, Zachary. I really like that answer. There you go. Charlie B, I really wish Archie Comics would resurrect. Haha. <laughs> After Life with Archie, I need closure on that story. I think we all do, yeah. Jillian, After Life with Archie is still my favorite with Chilling Adventures of Sabrina as a close second. I always love seeing the Archie characters thrown into drastically mm. different situations. Mm. Shout out to Jillian. <laughs> Jack, Blossoms 666, the line, one of our children will become darkness made flesh, has stuck with me ever since mm-hmm. my first read. And Laura Braga's cover, Art Hot Diggity. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Blossoms that is 666 such a- is one of my favorite like Archie stories like, at all, ever. It's so brilliant. <laughs> the idea yeah. of, like, of 
of making them like pitting the the Blossom Twins against each other for the title of Antichrist feels so <laughs> weirdly natural. Like it makes perfect sense. And to have all of the collateral and shout out to Dilton who gets treated very unfairly. Um, <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's beautifully done. It's really creepy. I suggest it highly. Please read it. <laughs> So that is Ashton's suggested reading. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, do you have a suggested reading for people? Um, actually, I got a question for Ron. Is Archie versus Predator considered part of the Archie Horror line? It's not technically branded Archie Horror, but okay. it basically is horror. I mean, it, it has yeah. a lot of like pulp aspects, a lot of horror aspects. But we kind of, I think it's just a, you know, the crossover stuff is typically like just Archie comics because right, that's yeah. the bigger brand. But, but yeah, I mean, if you look at any interior page from an Archie versus Predator uh, comic, <laughs> you're going to say that's horror. So yeah. we'll just go with an unofficial yes. Yeah. And that would be, that would be my suggestion. Like as someone who, you know, I oddly enough, you know, I'm an eighties kid. I definitely grew up watching the Predator way too many times, but then also randomly, I also kind of got into comics, I actually definitely got into comics because of Archie. So the combination of the two and then seeing Alex DeCampi just kick the brakes off and just be like, no, we're doing this for real. <laughs> <laughs> like that just, I mean, like just got so much entertainment out of that book. And like, it actually ended up being, uh, we recently asked what uh, modern classics are uh, in comics to our audience on Previous World Weekly, I would definitely put that book on that list. Uh, Archie versus Predator is not what I expected it would be, and I love it because of that. So, yeah. There you go. There's that cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we've got two fantastic series. So there's the first series, and then yeah. there was a follow-up one uh, just last year. And, yeah, they take you down a rabbit hole of Archie comics concepts and characters and universes, and mm -hmm. it's just it's a wild ride start to finish. Absolutely. Now, Ron, as as kind of the authority here, what is your recommended suggested reading for, for people? So I'm going to go a little bit outside of the horror realm for this. I'm going to suggest the new Jughead's Time Police series. But here's why I'm suggesting it. Because it involves versions of Jughead that you see in Jughead the Hunger. So yeah. Werewolf Ooh. Jughead shows up in this new comic along with a bunch of other Jughead characters. It's another um, love letter to Archie, Jughead, all the comic book stuff, written by Cena Grace, art by Derek Charm. It is phenomenal. It is so much fun from start to finish, and it's a reboot of the classic Jughead, the, uh, mm -hmm. Jughead's Time Police series from the early 90s, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just so much fun. So this graphic novel, it's available at comic shops from the Archie Comics website. Anywhere you read it, you're going to have a great time. So I, I really can't recommend that one enough. It's a great recommendation. And before we, we head out here, uh, I want to make sure to remind everyone to pick up Vampironica and Jughead the Hunger at your local comic shop using comicshoplocator.com. Now, let's go around the circle and see if anyone has anything to plug. Let's go ahead and start with Troy. Uh, whoa, okay. Um, over on previousworld.com. I don't know why I didn't expect that. I should have known better. Um, mm -hmm. Over on previousworld.com, I have interviews. I got, I got the interviews, guys. Um, I got Peter David. He talks about his run on The Hulk and uh, his current Marvel series, Maestro. Uh, I did a fun one with a bunch of uh, French creators for, I'm sorry, Italian creators, my bad, um, for uh, uh, Hotline Miami Wildlife. And um, Look, uh, keep an eye on preseworld.com in the coming weeks because I'm going to be doing an interview, uh, got a covered interview with Emma Kubert of the legendary Kubert family. She's got a book out from them. It's called Inkblot. And she's going to give us an art breakdown of uh, her cover. And I'm going to talk to Rick Remender about his new series, Scumbag. So, and that's going to be a, a video interview. So definitely check that out. Nice. What about you, Ashton? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Halloween Comic Fest. As we move into spooky season, we're going to pivot a bit from Free Comic Day to Halloween Comic Fest um, and celebrate all that cool stuff. So come hang out, cast your vote. Um, I'm asking everyone right now who would win in a foot race between a mummy or a zombie. Uh, and then in terms of interviews, you can catch me Monday at uh, noon Eastern time. I'll be interviewing Alice Oseman, who's the writer and illustrator of Heartstopper is a very, very sweet, very cute coming of age, coming out story. So that will be at Previews World on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And last but definitely not least, Ron, what can you tell us that's coming up and plug away? 
Oh, yeah. So we've got actually a new Vampironica graphic novel that just came out in comic book shops yesterday. Vampironica New Blood. This spins out of their crossover that she had with Jughead the Hunger. And it basically goes deeper into the history and lore of the vampires in Veronica's world. So this takes you into unexpected turns, unexpected mysteries. And it's a, it's a beautiful book with art by Audrey Mock. And we also want to remind you about the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Presents Madam Satan one shot that's coming out next month. That's definitely not going to be something you want to miss. And then just keep an eye on Archie Comics. We're at Archie Comics on Twitter, on Instagram, Archie Comics Official on Facebook. We're posting all the time. I can never stop posting. Please respond, <laughs> like, and favorite everything so the numbers go up. I need the numbers to always go up. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can follow me at Ronzilla on every platform imaginable except for TikTok. So that's what's going on. <laughs> um, I really want to thank everybody for having me on here today and being able to give a chance to talk about Archie Comics, Archie Horror. This was really, really fun. Thanks for having us or thank coming on here. Us. Yeah, this has been great. Yeah. Now, for those of you watching, if you have a graphic novel that you'd like us to talk about, leave a comment below and your choice could be picked for a future episode. And make sure to follow us uh, at Previews World on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch. And just remember, heroes are a dime a dozen, but comic fans are priceless. We'll see you next time.